So you may wonder what options you have for electric shavers off the grid. Well, of course, you can use ones like this that just run directly off mains plugs. There's little ones like this that uh, have batteries inside, and that one actually runs quite well. Um, I'll ignore that phone. And there's other ones that are like this, but instead of running straight off a mains plug, you've got plug packs hooked to them. Now, there's a funny little thing you can do with these ones that are plug packs. I tried to get the camera up before, but I couldn't see it well enough. Um, but this one runs off, basically, that's a mains to 12 volt transformer. Um, so what you can do is you can do a little stunt, and that is plug this into the wall and then work out your positive and your negative using your multimeter leads. Now remember with this one again, the dash comes up on the side if it's incorrect, and then you just swap your two prongs around and the dash goes away, and it'll have your volts written here, and then you've worked out what side's positive and what side's negative. So you've got to basically stick a bit of masking tape on there um, and actually wrap it right around so you know the two sides come together so it's not easily going to fall off. And then mark what side's positive and what side's negative. So you might just want to put positive this side or negative this side. So you know that this one's positive and then of course the other one will be negative or something like that. Then what you've got to do is just get your wire snippers out and just chop it right near the bottom of this. Then you switch your multimeter into a different mode. Continuity. Remember this one? Now, you use that mode stuck in the end of that and then on the leads here because that's two leads stuck together there to work out what one's positive and what one's negative. Do you know what I'm saying here? So you end up with basically the positive and the negative coming out of the end of this plug the same as it was when it had the mains adapter on it. Except you have these ones wired into your battery system. But you've got to check this with it hooked to mains first. And then unplug it from mains, then make the chop, then use the continuity to work out what one up here near the plug pack corresponds to what one here, so then you get your positive and negative wired up correctly. Now, when your solar system's on during the day, um, you know, it can go 14.3, 14.8, .3, you know, around there uh, with volts, so it's not really good during the day. You may get away with it, you may run it fine. Having said that, at night, most batteries sit at around 12.6 volts. My parents tell me that the one in their um, brand new mobile home, that actually sits at 12.8 volts um, during the night. That's a sealed battery. Uh, but my solar fridge stick sits at about 12.6 volts. But you know, you're only point whatever of a volt difference of what this plug pack was. And you get a switch and you wire the switch to the positive, that's industry standard to wire switches to the positive, not the negative. And then you can basically have that coming out of the wall and use your shaver directly um, off of your solar system. And you may say, well, what's the point of that? Well, you know, first of all, you don't lose the little bit of power that you lose, you know, the, I don't know, seven, eight percent whatever you're going to lose out of your inverter um, and also if you start doing the maths on the input rating of these and the output rating especially if it's not one of these universal worldwide ones when this one is it's 100 to 240 volt AC um, no yeah but here they say it's 11 watts now if I've got the, the DC volts here and the, the
the amps and that, and I add it all up, I guarantee you it will be less than 11 watts. Because in the conversion from mains to 12 volt, you lose a bit of power here. So first, you're losing power on the conversion from 12 volt to mains, and then you're losing more power converting mains back to 12 volts again. Stupid. But, I mean, realistically, the conversion that you're going to lose is absolutely minuscule. It's only a couple of watts. Uh, it's not going to be any big deal. Um, but having said that, you may be at the stage where you're, you know, not cashed up enough to buy an inverter. Um, you know, that may be something that you're saving for next. Or you may be living in a van. Um, or you may be trying to, you know, just experiment and play around and you, and you want as many things as you can get running off 12 volt because I know firsthand that some of these crap Chinese inverters, it doesn't need to be anywhere near 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I had my Chinese one that I originally had, that was failing at 31 and a half degrees Celsius. That's like in the 90s somewhere, in the, the early 90s Fahrenheit was, I think. Um, that was a limit disappointment, um, you know, 31 and a half degrees Celsius, it was game over. I mean, you know, and when you, you have inverters with issues like that, it's nice to try and make everything 12 volt, not just because of the aspect of efficiency, but because of the aspect of a crack inverter not handling, handling high temperatures. But if you've got everything 12 volt, it doesn't matter about the inverter, it still continues to run anyway because you're using it directly off the battery. So that's another good aspect of it. Um, but that's just a little stunt I thought I'd uh, show you how to do um, that I thought of the other day. And, and I think, uh, yeah, it's an interesting little um, thing to do.